What's up everyone? Welcome to the Weekly Rundown. I'm your host Matt from Multitech Visions and today is Monday, July 12th, 2021. Last week we saw faster load times for business accounts, localization updates, a new Android app was released, there were some UX changes both in the editor and inside our app sheet apps, of course there's a bunch of bug fixes, not to mention the game changing new input function. Let's get to it. A sign out button was added to the account drop down inside the editor page. New strings have been included into the localization parameters. Things like has attachment and start date are included inside there now. So this gives you the ability to specify different language that you want to use there, different words, whatever you'd like to do. Warning and error notifications on deployment will now appear at the bottom of the editor with a gray background like the rest of the pop-ups in the editor deployed to all. A new Android app has been released. This is version 14.7 into the Play Store and will be gradually rolled out over the next week. Uh, it addresses a bug where images were not being displayed inside a drawing field. Adjusted gray text in dark theme for higher contrast. Some places that use gray text like form view input labels were reported to have an inadequate contrast. This has been deployed to all. So sometimes the gray text that they've used was just, you know, it was maybe a little too light or it was a little too dark or whatever. There just wasn't enough contrast to differentiate between the text and the background. So they've increased that contrast now. Chart views now respect and set display names for the chart title. Previously, when a user set the display name for a chart view, the display name was only respected on the navigation and not as the title above the chart itself. So now the name that you give your chart view will be displayed as the title of the chart in the chart itself. Special characters are no longer allowed in the app name when copying the app. This matches the behavior used when you're creating an app. So sometimes you were able to get away with putting in special characters. Uh, they've tightened that down. Now you can still add special characters after the fact. It's just when you are initially creating the app or if you're copying the app, right, which is creating the app, it's the same process. It's during that you can't have any special characters inside the, the, the app name. But after that, you can go back in and adjust the app name to include, you know, parentheses, dashes, things of that nature to help if you want to differentiate one app from another. Improved performance for apps with greater than five tables. So apps with many tables on the enterprise accounts will see an improved sync performance. This change causes more tables to be fetched in parallel, thereby reducing the overall waiting time for syncs to complete. This deals with the degree of parallelism that the servers use when it's reading your data. If you go into your performance profiler, you can see uh, what degree of parallelism each operation is using. And so you can think about these, these degrees of parallelism as tracks for loading data, right? So when your app starts loading, the free account has two tracks that it can start loading data on. The core account has three. So the maximum that you can have on an enterprise account is 10 tracks of data that, you're, that the server's reading, going through, collecting, calculating, doing all of this, and then it puts it all together in the end. There's some rollout changes. The button that allows you to copy a table from one data source to the next, that has, the rollout for that has been increased now to 100% of free users and 50% of paid users. We had a bug fix come out. Previously, when an integer step value was chosen for a numeric column, we assumed all the values should be integers and show the telephone type number input. This behavior was confusing and has been removed. In a detail view, for a column of the type list of ref, the column's display name expression will now be used if it's present. Previously, in some places, the column's name was displayed instead of the display name. Uh, if you look further down into the comments, someone provided a screenshot of what it looks like now. Previously, this would have displayed the name of the column, so related whatever. An issue is fixed where action buttons would sometimes have a redundant tooltip. 
This change removes redundant tooltips that were appearing alongside prominent actions that already had a visible label. It also rolls back the action button tooltips to free users only. The floating action button tooltips will continue to roll out to premium users and have not been rolled back. It's deployed to 100% of free users and 50% of paid users. So the problem they were having there is that sometimes when you would set a, an action to display prominently, right? So that's where it's sitting up at the top. The uh, the dis, the tool tip that is that the tool tip that is displayed when you hover over the action would display the same thing that's displayed under the action. An issue is fixed where ref type image labels were too small in some contexts. Deployed to all. An issue was fixed where an account alert showed for workspace enterprise customers when such an alert should not have appeared. Deployed to all. An image was fixed where when an image and text were present in a group header, they were not aligned properly. Deployed to all. An issue was fixed that prevented the download of uncommon file types such as .x underscore t with Google Drive as the app provider. Deployed to 1% of free users. And now we come to the last part of this video where I'm going to briefly talk about the new function input. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail in this video. I'll have another deep dive that I'll go in that you can watch where I dip, where I dive into how this works and play around with it and see what's possible. In this video, I just want to briefly talk about what it does, what it looks like, and what it looks like we can do with it. If we look at the post that was released by Praveen, there's a whole lot of details in here. You can read it if you wish. Uh, but really, to get a sense of what it's really all about, if you scroll down and look at some of these examples that people have provided, you can see uh, what it really looks like. Rafid provided a pretty good example showing multiple inputs that are possible. So he taps on this item down here that opens up this new input modal, right? And you can see there's two things that he's included inside here. Not only does it, is there a space for an enum list, but there's also a space for a quantity. That's fun. Hayato has provided a good example. This is, this is a really fun one. You'll see here he bulk selects three records, clicks the new input, provides a single value, and that value is then used to update all three records. That's fun. So the general idea with this is you could take a data change action, something that would normally hard code something, and instead of just setting the value, now you can instead say, I want input from the user. And then a little pop-up will appear asking for that input. And so it looks like we're going to be able to provide enums, enum lists, numbers, text fields. I feel like any data type that you could use an action to set, you're going to be able to have an input that can call for an input from a person. For now, this feature is still in beta mode. It's available for everybody to use, but being something that was just released, it's going to have, a, it's going to have some issues and some bugs and some wrinkles that need to be figured out. But this provides us the ability for game changing style functionality. The way you would have to normally do something like this before this, this was introduced, uh, you'd have to create a flow of forms that would restrict things just to ask for like the one piece of data. So just think about that. You've got a table with all of these columns on it, right? But you only need to fill the one. So how could you go about this? Well, you could do a quick edit where somebody could, you know, do it on the detail form. Um, you could do it to where they just go inside the form. And so then they just got to find the field that they want to use. That's not very good. Create a slice that would hold just the fields that need to be filled. And so then you'd have to, so you'd have to create a slice. You'd have to have a view for that. You'd have to create an action system to launch you into that specific view and then to take you out of that view back to where you need to go. So there's all of these, all of this overhead that was originally necessary in order to 
provide some sort of display prompt to the user. Now we can just use input. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for watching the video. Make sure you give it a like and a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. It really helps the channel with all the algorithm stuff that's going on I'm trying to build. Also, if you really want to show your love, you can head on over to patreon.com slash multitech. There's some goodies over there. It's 10 bucks a month. I got a lot of good stuff going on over there. Check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the community.